Private Lender Podcast, Episode 8. This is the Private Lender Podcast, the show that shares practical advice and know-how for new and seasoned lenders, from private mortgages on single-family houses to joint ventures on commercial projects and beyond. Discover details about investment vehicles that you won't find at your local bank or online broker. Listen and learn from private lenders and real estate investors, as well as from professionals and entrepreneurs, as they share the details, strategies, and the insight that allows for successful and prosperous lending. Now, get ready to increase your ROI. Here's your host, Keith Baker. Welcome, Lender Nation, to Episode 8 of the Private Lender Podcast. I'm your host, Keith Baker, and thank you for joining me today. Before we get into today's topic of liens, I just want to take a moment, and I want to say thank you to everyone who has reached out to me via the website, privatelenderpodcast.com, or Facebook and Facebook Messenger, with your words of encouragement and gratitude. Receiving emails and Messenger posts really make my day, and I'm grateful that some of you have taken the time out of your life to contact me and provide your feedback. It really does mean the world to me, so thank you. And please keep those emails and messenger posts coming. And if you've listened to a few episodes or more than a few episodes of the Private Lender Podcast, please go to iTunes, Stitcher, Google Play, SoundCloud, or whatever podcast platform you use to listen to the Private Lender Podcast and leave me a rating and review. I don't do this out of ego. I just do it because... I have to compete with the likes of Tim Ferriss, Grant Cardone, Gary Vaynerchuk, and some big heavyweights out there. And the more ratings and reviews that I get, the higher up the, the podcast will go into iTunes and Stitcher and SoundCloud and Google Play. And it'll be put in front of more people's eyes and hopefully increase the audience. So if you can, please take a moment and leave a rating and review. Now today is an intro style or intro episode there will be no interview however i'm going to take it to the topic of liens and take about a 20 15,000 or 20,000 foot view of a lien and tell you why it's so important when you have a private mortgage to keep, to get uh, <laughs> scratch that why it's so important when you have a private mortgage to get a first position lien to do this i'm going to illustrate with your personal residence for example i assume most of you listening have purchased at least one house for yourself and to do so, you either went to a bank or a mortgage broker to get your mortgage. And at closing, you sign a promissory note that says, I'm borrowing X amount of money at X interest rate for so many years. I'll pay the monthly. And after 15 or 30 years, the house will be mine. Along with that promissory note is a deed of trust. Now, this is where this gets very state-specific. Texas is a deed of trust state. Other states are not. So if you're listening to this podcast outside of Texas, please consult uh, an attorney, a realtor, a real estate professional in whatever state you're in. But that deed of trust is then taken down to the county courthouse and it's recorded at the county clerk's office. And what happens is that mortgage or that lender who loans you the money to buy your house now has a lien against your house. So if you don't pay the mortgage, they can come back and foreclose and take the property back. And the importance of a first position lien is when you someone looks at title, the title, the chain of title to a property, oftentimes they'll go back to sovereignty or whenever the state was created or the territory um, was incorporated. And it's chronological. Most liens are chronological. So if, if Wells Fargo loaned you the money to buy your house and a few years later you put in a pool and you take a second mortgage or a home equity line of credit, that is now a second position lien simply because of chronology and when it was it was posted or it was recorded at the county clerk's office. And let's say you have a disagreement with a contractor who's painting your house and you don't pay him, so then he goes and files a mechanics lien. That would be in the third position. So in this case, Wells Fargo is your first position lien. The home equity line of credit would be the second position and the mechanics lien for the painter that you didn't pay would be the third position. Either one could foreclose on you at any time if you don't satisfy the contract with them. So let's look at the painter, the third position, the mechanics lien. If he forecloses up on you, he still owes the second position lien and the first position lien. So those, those would become his responsibility. So he's going to have to make your mortgage payment and he's going to have to also make your home equity payment to satisfy those two 
those two positions. Same thing with the home equity line of credit. If you don't pay them and they choose to foreclose, they don't have to worry about any lien that's subordinate to them or that came after them. So the mechanics lien is not their concern. They don't care if that painter gets paid or not. But that home equity line will still have the responsibility or the obligation to make the payments for the first position lien. So when you make a a loan, a private mortgage, to a a real estate investor, if you have that first position lien, then it doesn't matter what comes behind, behind you in order of recording. You can foreclose and you don't owe any other junior lien any money. This is my understanding. Check with your attorney. Check with real estate professionals in your state. But at least in Texas, this is my understanding. Now, where things get tricky is with county taxes or, let's say, IRS debt or federal government debt because those liens become superior to any other lien. So, for And that's why a lot of banks or mortgage companies want you to escrow your taxes and insurance and make that part of your monthly payment. They save it up at the end of the year. Come January, they pay your taxes. They pay your insurance premium because they want to protect their property and their interest in that property. However, if you don't pay your property taxes, the county or whatever municipality that levies those taxes can come back and foreclose. And at that point, it doesn't matter that Wells Fargo has the first position lien. The tax lien is superior and more important, and it will be satisfied, and the county will get their money if there's anything left over. Subordinate liens may or may not receive some money or payments. So this is why first position liens are stressed in private mortgages and private lending. Even though you do have a private mortgage to an, a real estate investor, you do want to make sure they're paying their their county taxes. You will also want to make sure they don't have any bankruptcies because the IRS and the federal government can levy a lien against any property if that real estate investor is in hock, so to speak. So you, as a private lender, want to make sure county taxes are being paid and that your borrower, your real estate investor that you're loaning to is not in any type of trouble with the IRS or has any outstanding, uh, outsta- outstanding liens. In a few episodes, I will have an attorney stop in and I'll interview so they can give a better definition of lien position, lien priority, at least in the state of Texas. Again, if you're listening to this outside of Texas, please consult with a, a local attorney or professional who can answer any questions about the position of liens where you live. Well, that's going to do it for this episode of the Private Lender Podcast. I want to thank you for spending your time with me today. And remember that you can loan a lot more than money in this world. So lend your time, lend your patience, lend a hand. Help somebody in need. Let's all do a little something to try to make the world a better place to live. Thanks, and I'll see you next week on the next episode of the Private Lender Podcast. Take care. Thanks so much for listening to this episode of Private Lender Podcast with your host, Keith Baker. For more great content and to stay up to date, visit privatelenderpodcast.com. If you enjoyed today's episode, please rate and review, and we'll catch you next time.